everybody. My name is Miss AJ and welcome to the Art Nook. Kitty Quest Children's Museum. Love of learning starts here. Today we're going to do some printing. What I need you to grab around your house are some materials that we're going to use to make prints on paper today. So what I found here at the museum is pretty simple stuff. I found some blocks that we use, some bubble wrap that came in a package that was delivered here. And the other cool thing that I'll show you to use is a meat tray that you, that's something from the grocery store that you can rinse off. And we're gonna use that to make some prints as well. Along with those items, and you guys can use anything that you find around your house that as long as your grown up says it's okay to get paint on. I'm gonna grab a tray or a plate that will wash off when I'm done with all my paints. Some scissors to cut my meat tray, cause that one was a big one. I'm gonna make smaller pieces of it. Some black and white paper, cause I wanna test and see what works better for my paints as well as my tempera paints. And today I have chosen some orange, purple, and white paint, because I want to see what that looks like on my black paper. To start off, I'm going to squeeze a little bit of each of these colors onto my tray, and it doesn't really matter what it looks like, because I just want to be able to press my items onto the tray and then onto my paper. So I'm gonna do a little bit of purple, a little bit of orange, and it's okay also if they get mixed together because that will make us a whole new color and pattern. And a little bit of white over here. I'm gonna start with my white paper. And the first thing I'm gonna make a print of are my blocks, just to see what kind of shapes I can make. So I'm gonna start with this one, and this one is my circle, and I'm gonna dip it into my purple paint on the edge of it. And then I'm just gently pushing on to my paper to create some prints. And as you can see, it looks just like this block or this bead. I'm also gonna use this one. That's right, my square. I'm gonna dip this one into my orange paint and see if I can make some similar prints with it. And you don't wanna do too much paint because that will mess up your print. Oh, see, I had too much paint on my block, but now that I have a little bit less, let me try again. I'm gonna dip it back in there and get a little more paint on there. And it's cool too, if you overlap the shapes, cause it makes a very cool image. And there you go. And with my last block or bead that I have, I'm gonna try and dip it a little bit in the purple and a little bit in the orange and see what happens. So you can see on the end of that bead or block, I now have a little bit of each of those colors. I'm gonna press it onto my paper, go back into my paint and keep pressing. And look at that. They almost look like they have stripes now. That turned out pretty cool. So this time I'm gonna try it on my black paper and see what happens. I also have my white paint, remember? So to start, I'm gonna flip my bead over just cause I wanna see what the white looks like all by itself on the black paper. I'm gonna dip it into my white paint. Not too much, I might have to wipe a little bit off there. And then I'm gonna press it onto my paper. And guess what? It looks pretty cool because of that high contrast black paper, my white shows up extremely well against it. And now I'm gonna go back in and add some of those other colors just to see what they look like as well. Maybe doing those two colors mixed together. 
and then overlapping on the white as well, just to give it a little bit of contrast and flair. That actually looks very cool. This framed on a wall would be a masterpiece. I'm gonna go back in and add a little of my purple on my square block and do some squares in between my circles just to see what I can create. And look at that. That is one cool piece of art. And that's just with some paint and some blocks I found around the museum. So let's see what else I can create using that bubble wrap I found. Grabbing a white piece of paper this time, I'm gonna set my blocks off to the side so I don't knock them over. And I'm gonna grab my bubble wrap. And because my bubble wrap's such a big piece, I'm gonna cut it down a little bit so that I can easily hold it in my hand maybe into an even smaller piece, just to make my prints a little bit better. So there's two sides, you can see it. And maybe we'll experiment and see which side works better. There's a slightly smoother side, and then there's the side that the bubbles are actually on. I think to start, I'm gonna start with the slightly smoother side and see what kind of print I can get with that. So I'm dipping it again, just into my paint like I did before. And again, I'm gonna mix the colors. This time I'm gonna lay it flat and press it down to see what happens. And let's see. It looks cool, but I think we can do better by turning the bubble wrap over to the other side. So I'm gonna grab a new piece this time and I'm gonna dip it into my orange and my purple. And you can see it kind of clings to just the bubbles and there's little spaces in between. See what happens when we press it down on our paper now. Ooh, now that looks pretty cool, I have to say. I'm gonna keep doing that a few more times to see if I can make a really cool pattern on my paper. And it's okay if you get a little paint on your hands, it comes right off. If you wanna put down a tray or a tablecloth or even a piece of newspaper to keep the area you're working under clean, feel free to do that. But I am just using washable tempera paint. So all of this will come off of my table and hands when I am done. Ooh, look at that. That actually might be my favorite, and I actually like this even more than my block prints. So the last print I want to show you is with that meat tray I had you guys grab. I'm gonna cut off a piece so that I have a flat spot. So I want to be able to have a flat space on this. And this is a little tough, so if you need a grown-up to help you cut a piece, definitely find a grown-up and some big scissors. So I've cut off a corner just like this, and you can see that this part is flat. You wanna be able to push that onto the surface of your paper. The other thing I have is a pencil, and it's not super sharp. It is a little bit dull, so that means it's not sharpened to a super sharp point. And then I'm gonna use that to draw onto that meat tray and the flat part of the meat tray because I'm gonna make my very own stamp. And I think I'm gonna draw something simple to start with just to make it easy. I'm gonna draw a smiley face. And you don't wanna push all too hard that you're making holes in it, but you do wanna push hard enough that you can see what you are creating. That's why it's really important that the pencil is not super, super sharp. So as you may be able to see, I now have a smiley face on my meat tray. I'm gonna dip it just like I did my other materials into the paint and then press it on 
to my paper and see if I can see what I have created, see if my drawing shows up. So unfortunately, I did not push hard enough. Although that looks very cool, it's not quite what I wanted. So I'm gonna go back and see if I push a little bit harder with my pencil, if I can get this to work. So I'm gonna push it down. There's enough paint on there, I think. Onto my paper one more time. Oop, it's hard to see, but as you can see, there is a smiley face starting to appear. So I'm gonna get one more piece of the tray and try again and see if I can get it to work better this time. All right, maybe this time I'll draw a heart and I'll keep it super simple just to see if I can get it to work. So I'm drawing a heart just like this. And I'm pushing harder than I did last time, but not all the way through the tray. Because what we don't want is that we're trying to keep the paint from going into that line that you've created in the tray. So I'm gonna dip it into my paint over here in the corner. Maybe a little bit more to get a little more paint on there. And then I'm gonna press, trying not to wiggle it around on to my paper. And as you can see, there is now a heart. So you guys can draw and create using that meat tray. And just remember, if you're writing words, they actually have to be written backwards because when you push this down on here, it's gonna make an image, a reverse image of what you've created here. So if you're writing your name, write, write it backwards, starting at the end and going forwards. All right, you guys, it has been fun as always doing some art with you today. I hope you join us again. Thanks so much and have a great day. Thanks for watching. Hit subscribe for more videos, and remember to check out our website for additional activities and information.